There are many cuisines that feature seafood, but can you imagine Greek food without octopus and calamari, fish big and small, and all sorts of crustaceans, and lots of them? Welcome to the wonderful abundance of Greek food, where it's always time to eat. Join our food safari to learn the tradition of macetes and how to make some simple dishes. An easy spanakopita, tender delicious Greek lamb and a dessert legend creates heaven on earth. Greek food is humble, it's honest, it's generous. You grow up and there's a mother chasing you with a spoon and a plate of food <laughs> all the time. But most of all, it is just so damn tasty. It's what Greek food is all about. It's the food of the gods. They are Greek. Peter Canistas is one of the legendary Greek-Australian chefs who says all his inspiration is found in the classic simplicity of the food that's been passed down through generations. Olives, olive trees, synonymous with Greece. There are three that are most recognised with Greek food. Uh, the Kalamata olive. With the Kalamata olives, you'll see that they have the mikri, which is a small Kalamata, and then they have the mammoth, they have the colossal and the super colossal. <laughs> the Greeks are very big about size. The next variety is the thrumnus, which are the sun-dried olives. They uh, look beautiful. They are, they're wonderful. They take on almost a raisiny flavour to them. The last variety that's very well known in Greece is um, the turkey stairs, the cracked green olives. So not a day goes by that you wouldn't eat or cook with olives? Or... Oh, if they're always on the table. Mm. But we make the best olive oil in the world. Be part of our cuisine and part of our diet for a very long time. But it's also a big part of the rest of our culture, the religious part of um, our life. When you're christened, you're, you're bathed in olive oil. What are you going to eat? Wild Greek oregano, oh. and it's at its best when it's dried because the oils in it come out oh. and the flavour develops. And the Greeks will only ever use the dried buds, the flower tops. They would never use the leaves, just the top bit. Masticha, it's a wonderful, wonderful spice. It is unique to Greece, and it's so unique it only comes from the southern part of one island, Hios. It's the it's the gum from these trees. It has a flavour sort of an earthy musk vanilla flavour. But when it comes to feta, there's at least three that, that I know and love. We have the goat's milk feta, the sheep's milk feta, and my favourite, which is called the piperati, which is a barrel-aged piquant feta that's made of sheep's milk. It's wonderful. Try it. Oh. It looks very creamy. It is. It's got a real bitey flavour to it, and it's used mainly in Greek salads, this mm. one especially, because it's prized for its flavour. It's like what uh, a prized parmigiano is. Yeah. yeah, and there are so many other Greek cheeses. Kefalotiri is the Greek equivalent of a pecorino. And then cassetti is an even milder, softer cheese, which is used a lot in things like saganaki. And then we have the halloumi, which you know, everyone loves. Do you ever eat halloumi by itself, or do you always have to heat it to, to make it really good? Cypriots um, use it instead of feta a lot of times on their salads, or they will do the Greek equivalent of a feta and watermelon salad, mm. and they'll use it just with slices of fresh um, halloumi. There's a lot of Greek flavours that are quite strong, aren't they? The salted fetas, the salted fish. Almost compete with each other, but just seem to work beautifully together. Mm. Absolutely. The Greeks are big on their flavours. They're big people, they, they, they speak big, they, they live big, they love big flavours of their food. Excellent. Mezevas are small plates of appetizers that are used to accompany ouzo or wine or beer. Mezevas is the plural form, meze is the singular form. When she grew up in Greece, Buki Kovalenko used to party with the Greek fast set, including Aristotle Onassis, and was born knowing her way around a mezevas spread. There are three main types of meze. Mm -hmm. There's the ouzo meze, which is the classical, 
the original, like your anchovies, your octopus, mm. anything that's got a strong flavour goes with the ouzo. Mm. Mm. Then you have your wine mezedas, which are normally a little bit softer. You have your spanakopites, tiropites, fried eggplants. Mm. Oh, yum. And then we have the beer meze, <laughs> which is an import. Now, my taramo salata is not pink and icky. Mm. It's made from fish roe in the can. The pink stuff that you find usually, it's just got a little bit of dye in it, and that's why it's pink. This oh. is the way mm. we make it. So you could eat a spread like this at any time during the day? Basically, they do it just before lunchtime. Have a nozo or two before they go and have their meal proper at home. Mm. Very civilised. Settings like this, you've got to smell the ocean. They used to be seen as bait, but the Greeks have taught us to value octopus and calamari. Caterer Savar Savas uses a Greek Cypriot recipe for his calamari. Sort of calamari for a sort of an afternoon that I would like to choose is about this in body length. So what we do is we'll cut the calamari in half. And then to score, we're not running our knife through the fish, we're actually banging it like that. Then um, a plump clove of garlic. So this is dried coriander seeds. Mm. And it works great with the fruitiness of the wine. A light wine like a Shiraz is perfect. Mm. When I'm doing Greek cooking, I use Greek olive oil. Savar covers the calamari and allows it to marinate for a couple of hours or overnight. Just before I barbecue the calamari, I like to strain it to remove all the marinade. I normally cook them for about a minute on one side and then half a minute on the other because they've already cooked right through and I don't mm. want them to overcook. Hey, you reckon this is the smell of grease, eh? Definitely. Grease Most in definitely, summer? Definitely, yeah. And then just to finish with fresh lemon. The other classic is the famous dip tzatziki. Sava peels and grates a cucumber, strains the liquid, adds some salt, crushes garlic, finally slices mint, and then mixes it all together with a thick Greek yogurt. I need some salt and a little bit of lemon. That's fantastic. That's yummy, isn't it? Greek salad, what don't you do? There's just, uh, if I see lettuce in a Greek salad, it's just, it's a no-no, mm. you know. It's, it's, it's good cucumbers, great tomatoes, and, you know, good olives, good olive oil, and that's, you know, really about it. George Kalambaras has spent his whole working life in the kitchen and now works on incorporating Mediterranean flavours in a new way. My, my little addition to it is, is bread, and why I like to add bread to it is because I love loads of olive oil in it and loads of vinegar in it and, and it reminds me of my childhood when my dad would wait for all of us to finish eating the salad mm. and then he'd take the bowl and start dipping his bread into it and mopping up all that the olive oil, bits. Yeah, all the little yeah. bits. So I've got this ciabatta here which I'm actually going to remove the... Um... Mm, that's a good Greek style bread there, Yeah, it is. We, we gave ciabatta to the Italians actually. <laughs> so simply I just tear this up, mm. not, not, not too fast. Lots of olive oil, a bit of salt. And then just straight into the oven and we'll toast that off for a bit. Okay, classic Greek salad. Here we go. Peel the cucumber. Lebanese cucumber. This is the thing, you know, they've got to be good tomatoes. Don't, don't mm. use them if they're not ripe enough. And I just um, literally roll cut these. Olives, these are beautiful and they've been marinating. We'll just whack a couple of them in. Nice and fine. In goes the shallots. The oregano, feta, I just crumble up. And then I've got a little bit of dill here, which is nice, because it's got that sort of aniseed flavour to it. Mm. And I just 
rip that into there. Olive oil goes in. Yeah. And my father-in-law's famous oh. vinegar. It's absolutely beautiful. And then... Ah. And we'll just mm. tear that up over the top. And that will soak up all those... Uh, mm. All the juices. You want to try some of this first? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm happy with that. Happy? Mm. Mm. What do you say? Yeah. Flavour of grease. Beautiful. There are very few dishes in Greece that aren't either wrapped, rolled, <laughs> or packed with this stuff. The Greeks love phyllo. It's used in savoury and in sweet. It's used in spatacopi and spinach pies and feta pies, um, in desserts, baklava, one, yeah. a classic in Greece, uh, galak de burigo, which is a baked custard phyllo oh. tart. It's, it's such a versatile yeah. ingredient. Food writer Demetra Alfred has grown up eating spinach grown by her father, Stan, and uses the pick of the crop for her spanakopita. She starts by chopping the spinach, spring onions and dill. How often would you buy phyllo pastry? It's the kind of thing you'd always have in your... in the fridge. Mm. You'd use it, say, once or twice a week. Uh -huh. Because a lot of the, the mazethas are made with phyllo pastry as well. So not a week goes by where you're not baking something with phyllo? Probably not, no. <laughs> no. And you just mm. have to butter between every layer. I, I like the flavour of the butter with mm. the phyllo. Mm. It's just... it just works as a combination. I've lost count, Maeve. How many have we put there? <laughs> Six. <laughs> Pick a number. Well, we're putting about a half a, um, half a packet on yeah. the bottom and the rest on top. Oh, that's easy. You want to mash the feta? We've got feta cheese in here and we just want it roughly, roughly mashed up. We've got a really strong... We're using pecorino here. Yeah. Just a few spoonfuls of this. We've got ricotta cheese and that kind of gives it a creaminess. Mm. The eggs. Mm -hmm. So once you've done the pastry, the mix yeah. is like so fast. It is, it is. Nutmeg. <laughs> and a couple of tablespoons of breadcrumbs. Yeah. Some pepper. And olive oil. And now the greens. You just have to use your fingers. Beautiful. Okay, in she goes. Oh, wow. So it's, it's not that difficult. Oh, no butter this time. Oh, I'm going to butter that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the smells that come out of that oven. <laughs> it's, I think that's probably what got me into cooking, enjoying mm. cooking so much. The smells coming out oh, of this oven. I just oven. love it. It just... It's just got a great homey feel to it. Now I'm just going to trim the excess. Just tuck it in like that. Looks lovely. And actually, those corners would be so crispy yes. and yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting it into diamond shapes. <laughs> Bit of water. This is a trick I got from Mum. <laughs> What's it do? It um, keeps the phyllo from puffing up. How long? Oh, about 45 minutes. Oh. Wow. Oh, yumbo. That looks... Yeah, that's turned out pretty good. Mmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tell me. It's good. It's good. It's hot. Oh. It's good. It's really nice. Oh, you said to eat it hot. Well, you have to eat it hot. One of Greece's favourite snack foods is gyros, traditionally minced beef and spices on a revolving spit. It's now evolved and there's also chicken and lamb using layers of marinated meat, cooked to tender and juicy and served in a pita bread. Steve Plangetis opened the first gyros shop in Sydney. The gyros is the name. Because rayon, like that, they put name gyros. That's gyrizi, gyrizi gyro. The proper gyros is the beef. The lamb and the chicken come after. The proper car yeah. is supposed to be all the, uh, the side of the car. Ah. To come in a small pieces, all, always inside the, the car. A little bit of oil on the 
on the bottom, a little bit on the top. And the original is the lettuce, yeah. tomatoes. You know, the most not like onions or not like tomatoes. Yeah. But that's the, the proper. Put the salt, put a, a paper. And as the Ziggy put it like that. That's very nice. So you reckon you can work all day on this? If you eat in that one, maybe you don't need a dinner. <laughs> <laughs> What do you reckon is the most famous Greek dish? The lamb on the spit. Yeah, look, definitely, you know, I, I, that lamb on a scutter where you cook the lamb quite gently using shoulder, neck, you know, those sort of secondary cuts, mm. and then actually finish it on a scutter, which is like a, a, a grill. This is, a, you know, a, a, the strap of the neck of lamb. Mm. I'll cut them in half. Beautiful. Then onions. You know, nice, nice and chunky. Mm. I love shallots because they're nice and sweet. Yeah, this is shallots. And then we've got a bit of garlic. And I'll also put some uh, zest of lemon. And now we're ready to go over and cook it all. So lots of olive oil. And I started on the fat side first. You know, get a bit of the fat rendered off it. Just want to seal it quickly. Uh, not too, um, not too coloured. And then to that, literally, I pour all the onions in, the garlic, the zest of lemon, my oregano. I add a splash of white wine. What's a yogurt do? It's got a lot of acid in it, so it's going to help break the meat down uh -huh. um, and, and make a beautiful flavour. And the actual yoghurt turns into cheese because you're actually cooking it. And then... Oh, honey. A bit of honey just over the top. It's sort of adding Greek breakfast to lamb. Exactly. Yeah. So just whack the lid on and then straighten the oven. Oh, cool. 160 degrees, an hour and a half. And I love it because all in the pot. It. Just leave it. No fuss. Go and have a nooze. <laughs> So traditionally with lamb, you'd have a potato-y, garlic yeah, dip. Yeah, scordaglia. Scordaglia, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I've got some uh, cannellini beans here, and we're going to make a little bit of a twist on the, the old scordaglia. And, and actually, uh, th these, I confess, are straight out of a tin. Lots of lemon juice. Garlic's in. Lots of olive oil. And I love this even just as on a bit of bread, mm. fresh bread, and That's great. we'll serve that with the uh, with the lamb. All righty, look at that! Wow, you have made cheese. Mm. It smells like the classic Greek lamb, yeah, exactly. but you've done it really different. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what? Next stop. Barbecue. Next stop, barbecue. But your neighbours go crazy smelling this, George. That's why we've got a high fence. <laughs> <laughs> So what you're just you're just getting that nice yeah, um, just barbecue flavour. Barbecue through. flavour through it, and, and it's it's already cooked. So literally, oh look, a couple of minutes. Yeah. A crunchy salad to accompany the lamb starts with finely sliced fennel, parsley, some of the onions and yogurt cooked with the lamb, a good splash of olive oil, and some lemon juice. So we've got this uh, this white bean, a lamb. Oh, sensational. And our salad, which is literally all the stuff that we cooked the lamb in, for good measure, we will add another splash of olive oil as we do. And there you go. There's our lamb. Man, that is so good. Beautiful. Oh, cuts like butter. Doesn't it? Oh, just beautiful. Sensational. Mmm. That oh. makes me happy. Mmm. I'm even happier. Yamas. 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 Making a good Greek coffee is a rite of passage for Greek girls. Liz Kados measures water in espresso cups and adds it to a bricky, 
than one spoon of coffee per person. I go for as heaped as you can balance on the spoon. <laughs> that's my rule of thumb. So that's two. Greeks like their coffee metrio mm. or sketo. Sketo mm. is no sugar and mm. metrio is sort of just in between. I think I'd be a metrio. A metrio? Mm. Okay. Now we just stir it mm. and you leave it actually quite chunky like that. All the magic happens out on the stove. So you can't walk away, you just have to sit and wait till it brews. So that'll take a couple of minutes. If I take a cup of coffee to my mother and it doesn't have the crema on top, mm. the kemaiki, she would say to me, that's a barefoot cup of coffee. And we may be peasants, but we do wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so our coffee needs to have the kemaiki. Uh -huh. And that's what gives it a flavour. Just let that sit for a minute. There Isn't we go. Oh, yep. wow. So that that's, is... That's the magic thing. That's a cup with shoes on. store full of earthly delights. Greek sweets are totally addictive and they fall into three delicious categories. The nutty and syrupy, the divine biscuits and the luscious and custody. One of the comfort foods of Greece is a sweet called lukomares. Light fluffy dough balls fried, soaked in a honey syrup and sprinkled with crushed nuts and cinnamon. These are something every Greek yaya or grandmother masters and can cook up if people are in the least hungry. So we have the plain flour in there. Into the plain flour we add the yeast, mm -hmm. the sea salt, it's just a little bit of sugar. The sugar actually activates the yeast. It gives it just a little bit of sweetness. And then we just add some water into that. And that is pretty it. It is so simple. It is a very simple batter. You could leave it for a minimum of about 15 minutes just so it activates or up to two or three hours. Mm -hmm. We're making basic sugar syrup. It's just a one-to-one. -one. That is two cups of sugar, two cups of water. And it's a juice of one lemon. And to that, we add the raspberries first, which we just want to put in, and then we add the rose water into that. So all we really do is we just break them up a little bit, and we bring them back to a simmer, and then it's ready. And then do the dipping. Put them in the fork there, roll them in the batter, uh -huh. so it's less mess on these ones, and then Pop them in Whoa. and look at those cook. So it's almost like a Greek style tempura, you could say, <laughs> for a sweet. You're actually going to get a really nice, crispy, crunchy coating of the lookmas on the outside. Mm. And the fig is just going to heat through. So all those caramelizers within. So yeah, and it's got a wonderful, like almost like a fig jam developing oh, on the inside God. of it. So once they get a nice golden colour, they come out. God, that was quick. Very quick, such a quick, simple dessert. <gasps> Just to finish it off, a little bit of the raspberry and rose petal sauce. Oh, God. That's a good use for fig, Peter. That is good, isn't it? On our next safari, the art form that is Chinese cooking, from a perfect fish to an insider's guide to yum cha. Yamas. It's the yamas. Wow. Beautiful. You're lucky being Greek, aren't you? I am. It actually, this stuff puts hair on your chest. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> really? Show, show me your back. No. <laughs>